In this video, we're going to introduce vowel features. The nice thing about introducing vowel features after consonants is that we have a lot of the same features that we use for consonants that we use to describe vowels as well. And we only need to add a couple more. And it also links very closely to the phonetic description we have. So some that we use from consonants are things like plus or minus back, plus or minus high, plus or minus low, and plus or minus round. And I will show you in the vowel chart later how all of these are determined for each sound. But there's two more that we have to add for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of description. Plus or minus tense asks, is a vowel tense or is it lax? So for instance, a tense vowel like E, so we have plus tense here, compared with the vowel I, which is minus tense. Now plus or minus front is a feature we're going to only use for vowels and eventually will be dropped. So you do not actually use this feature in phonetics, or sorry, in phonology, but for the sake of this lecture series, as well as showing a clear difference between central sounds and front sounds, I will use the plus front feature. In fact, it's very, very common in a first year phonology course to use this plus front feature. And then once you get closer to grad school, they're like, no, you don't need that anymore. So we'll keep plus or minus front in for now. So let's figure out how we can use these features in the vowel space here to describe all these vowels. Well, the first distinction is with high and low. So we can talk about the height of vowels as being plus or minus high and plus or minus low. Now the plus high minus low sounds are essentially all of these high sounds in our chart. So if we ever described a sound as being high, it is plus high and minus low. Similarly, minus high and plus low, of course, would be all the low sounds. So like ah, aw. Ah. Now, to get at the central sounds, we say they're neither high nor are they low. So they're minus high, minus low. And this just means that they're somewhere in the middle. So diphthongs like a, the schwa, uh, the uh, or o oh in Brooklyn speech, or the lax eh, as in bet. These are minus high, minus low. So using the high and low features, we can get at the height of a vowel. Now, with the front and back features, we can get at how forward or how back our tongue is in our mouth when we make them. So for instance, sounds like e, a, e, we can use plus front minus back, meaning they are plus front, they're the front of the mouth. And then in the back, of course, we use minus front plus back. And of course, to get at the central sounds, we could use minus front minus back. So we can see that using the four features, so high, low, front and back, we can break our vowel space into nine quadrants. And we can talk about the sounds within the quadrant. So for instance, if I want to talk about, say, the natural class of these four vowels here, I can say these are plus high minus low plus front minus back, and I get these four vowels. Then using the tense and lax features, I can distinguish between these two pairs, and then with roundness, I can distinguish between the individual vowels again. So with six features, we can pinpoint a vowel that we want to talk about. But so far, I've only introduced front, back, high, and low. So now, let's talk about plus tense and minus tense. And this is exactly what you'd expect. Is a vowel tense or not tense? So if a vowel is tense, it is in dark purple. If it is minus tense, it is in pink. So the minus tense vowels, I think, would be the ones that make the most sense. So even in school, when you learn the sounds, you think short vowels and long vowels. We know now that that's kind of a weird thing to say, but a minus tense like i or u or e or e or u o a. These are all sounds that our tongue is not very tense when we say. And we can contrast with this, these with sounds like e and u and a and o and a, which are definitely much more tense. So some people just like to memorize these. What I suggest, of course, is to pronounce these sounds and try to feel with your tongue and just kind of feel the tenseness at the same time along with your memorization. And this will help because sometimes you get a mind blank. For instance, uh, the schwa is good because it's unstressed, it's untense, it's just in the dead center of your mouth. 
But other things like, let's say, if you think aw, 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 it feels tense at first, aw. But then we can contrast it with something like ooh, and we can feel there's this sharp difference in tenseness. So my advice is, of course, to make the sounds with your mouth as you memorize them. But of course, if you're taking an intro course in phonology, typically you only need to know the ones for English. Uh, so you don't need to know the whole chart, but starting with English is a good idea. You'll also notice that for the most part, if we break this up into sections, kind of like before, we see a pattern. The top of these high and low sequences are tense, and the bottom ones are not tense. So that is another good way of looking at things. And in fact, one thing I also like to do when I take a look at least the top and the middle is that the minus tense or the lax vowels are typically pushed more towards the center than the other ones are. Of course, this kind of breaks down in this section at the bottom, uh, but for the top and center part of the mouth, the lax sounds are definitely pushed more towards the center compared to their counterparts. So for instance, e and i, very close, except i is slightly more towards the center. U and U, very close. So again, these are just tricks for plus and minus tense. Okay, uh, one more thing, I guess, in the previous one is, of course, the roundness distinction. So I didn't really point this out here because, for the most part, even on the chart itself, it says all of these sounds in the circle on the right are plus round, and all the ones on the left would be minus round. So U is the plus round, while Ooh is the minus round. If you're listening through a headset, you might not have heard much of a difference at all. It's totally normal. Um, but plus or minus round, just take a look at where it is in relation to the dot. Okay. The final feature is plus or minus nasal. And this is used for consonants and for vowels. And you're thinking, wait a second. Nasal vowels. I speak English. I don't speak French. We don't have nasal vowels in English. But, oh no, you do. And here's a nice exercise in allophones. So here's some words. Bat, ban, tack, and tan. I want you to say those words out loud. Bat, ban, tack, tan. What do you notice? Well, you notice that the vowel in ban and tan is kind of nasalized. And that's what this little squiggle above means. This little squiggle. On a vowel, that means it's nasalized. And that means that the vowel has a plus nasal feature, while the vowel in bat has a minus nasal feature. Of course, even this N here is plus nasal. So you can imagine if we have a system, especially when we look at feature geometry later, and we say that, oh, this is a plus nasal sound. Well, what's probably happening here is that it's spreading its nasalness to the vowel. In fact, when we do feature geometry, that's exactly how we talk about this process. But plus nasal is one of those features we use for vowels when vowels are modified or colored by its following or preceding sounds. So although we may not think of plus or minus nasal as being an important feature for vowels in English, they are. In fact, in French, uh, tons of vowels are nasalized in French. Plus nasal on a vowel in French is a hugely important feature for distinguishing their natural classes. So if you have any questions about features on vowels, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.